The impact and contributions made by African Americans on American history is undeniable. And every February in the United States, black history is celebrated. But that wasn't always the case. This week on Record West Virginia, we celebrate the father of black history, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Born to two former slaves in December of 1875, Carter G. Woodson would often have to help out on the family farm, which prevented him from regularly attending school. Still, Woodson, through his own determination to learn, taught himself the basics of most subjects, including reading and writing. As a teenager, Woodson and his brother Robert would migrate to West Virginia to get jobs in the coal mines of Fayette County before the Woodson family would permanently relocate to Huntington, West Virginia in 1893. It was here in Huntington that Woodson's lifelong efforts in education would begin. His father was uh, one of several former slaves uh, who came to uh, this area with Collis P. Huntington to uh, complete the railroad. He stayed two or three years and moved back uh, to uh, New Canton, uh, Virginia, and uh, Carter G. Woodson was uh, born in New Canton, Virginia in uh, 1875. He relied on his father, who was a great example uh, to him, and um, he taught himself the classics. Uh, he uh, was uh, a well-educated edu man basically because of his own teachings before he had the formal education. He only spent one year in high school. In 1897, Woodson received his high school diploma from the All Black Douglas High School in Huntington. And after briefly teaching school in Winona, West Virginia, Woodson returned as principal of Douglas High from 1900 to 1903. At the same time, Woodson earned his bachelor's degree in literature from Berea College in nearby Kentucky. After spending some years traveling the world and serving as an educational supervisor in the Philippines, Woodson returned to the United States and obtained a master's degree from Chicago University. Eventually, in 1912, Woodson will be awarded a PhD in history from Harvard University, becoming just the second African American after W.E.B. Du Bois to earn a doctorate from the prestigious institution. Woodson, uh, unlike Du Bois, though, was descended from former slaves, and Woodson is believed to be the only offspring of former slaves to receive a PhD in history from any institution, making his research and writings on slavery in America even more significant, uh, because he knew uh, what his uh, parents had experienced and other relatives and their friends. Uh, so uh, anytime anyone does any research on American slavery uh, and African Americans in general, uh, uh, if they don't begin with uh, Carter G. Whitson, uh, then you should be suspicious of the quality of their work. During his years traveling and years as a student, Woodson realized that the role of blacks in American history, as well as world history, was being ignored and misrepresented. He sought to change this not only as an educator, but also as a writer and activist. Woodson, along with four other black men, founded the Association for the Study of African American Life and History in Chicago in 1915. The same year he published his first book, The Education of a Negro, prior to 1861, the following year, Woodson founded a quarterly academic journal, the Journal of Negro History, which continues to be published today as the Journal of African American History. It was widely believed that African Americans had no history to be appreciated, and Woodson set about to debunk that, uh, that kind of thinking. 
There are many people who believe that Woodson was an institution builder and he was concerned about uh, black institutions. And that's why you see him creating, uh, he would find a need and fill that uh, void. Uh, he knew that black scholars uh, were not uh, being published by uh, uh, white publishers. Uh, so he created the uh, Journal of uh, Negro History, which is now a Journal of African American History. Uh, he realized that black authors uh, were not being, were rarely published uh, by mainstream publishers. So he created his own book publishing company and published not only uh, his books, but he published uh, books by other authors. He believed that uh, if we could show that African Americans had made contributions in history like other races had, he would uh, erase some of the hatred because through more education and understanding, uh, a complete understanding of history, other people would appreciate uh, the contributions of, of African Americans. Woodson's profile was rising in the black community as one of its most important leaders of the time. But still, Woodson faced struggles in getting his work accepted by white scholars and white-owned publishing companies. This led directly to his creation of the Associated Publishers in 1922, a publishing company that would focus on publishing the work of black scholars and authors. Woodson continued to produce his own works as well as publishing perhaps his most famous book, The Miseducation of a Negro, in 1933. But it was his pioneering of Negro History Week in 1926 that garnered Woodson's nickname as the father of black history. The week-long celebration of black contributions to history would be expanded in the 1970s to include the entire month of February. Woodson chose the first week in February to cover the, uh, the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass two people who made significant contributions uh, in African-American freedom. Without Woodson, you wouldn't have uh, uh, departments of African-American history. Uh, there are uh, African-American history and Africana history uh, in all the major universities, in some cases minor <laughs> universities and colleges, because of Woodson. Uh, you didn't have such uh, programs uh, before him. Uh, you see his stamp on, on all of that, if, if you scratch uh, the, the surface. Uh, his impact is, is everywhere. His name is not as well known as some other African American uh, achievers in the 20th century because he was not trying to push his own name. He wanted uh, the world to know about these other people, their achievements, uh, which had been ignored. Uh, and as a result, we know less about Woodson because he wanted us to know about these people who had come before him. From his early beginnings working in the coal mines in West Virginia and teaching uh, in West Virginia, his West Virginia experience in those early years were the turning point uh, for uh, his life. And uh, he became the father of, uh, of black history from those beginnings. Carter G. Woodson did come back to West Virginia in 1920 to serve as the academic dean of the West Virginia Collegiate Institute, now known as West Virginia State University. He would leave this position in 1922, and though Woodson did not live or work in the state again, he routinely returned to visit family in Huntington and to engage in speaking arrangements throughout the Mountain State. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.